Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott. Today, we're painting a really cool model. We're painting the Wadroon Predator from Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. Now, I really enjoy this model. I love the muscle and the definition and all of the scars on the model. And I've painted it with a really cool red paint scheme for the skin. I actually had a lot of fun with this model. So let's go ahead and dive into how I've painted this model. To get this model ready for painting, we've primed it with Wraithbone Spray Primer from Citadel. So we're going to start this model off by painting it with Corn Red. We're going to paint this all over all of the skin, anywhere that it's exposed. This includes around the eyes, on the chest, and the arms, as well as several spots along the legs. And once we've allowed our base color to dry, we're going to shade it with Karaburg Crimson. This is going to darken down the red. It's going to seep into all of the crevices and really show us where the muscle definition is on the model. And it's going to serve as a guide for the later highlights we're going to put on the skin. Now once we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to use Mephiston Red and we're going to go through and start picking out all of the raised muscles on the model. Now you're just going to kind of want to follow what looks natural for the muscle shape and form on the model. And you're just going to paint all over and leave the recesses and crevices and spots where the shade is pulled up, you're going to leave those spots darker. Now when we're done with that, we're going to go through with Evil Sun Scarlet. Now we're going to do a additional highlight, but we're not going to do the entire surface of the muscle. We're just going to pick out the spots where the light would catch more on the muscle, where it might have a bit more of a sheen, or even just might have more wear and tear on the skin. Now with that all done, we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade, and this is going to serve to blend our other colors together. Now I did two coats on this, but you may find that you need to do three or even four coats, depending on how dark and how blended you want the skin to appear. Now once we've done that, we're going to use Averlin Sunset, and we're just going to carefully pick out the eyes. Now this model doesn't have super defined eyes on it, so you kind of get to decide where you want the eyes to be. You're going to want to use the red from the previous steps to pick out the edges around the eyes. Now we're going to take Abaddon Black, and we're going to paint all of the scars or tattoos that are spread across the skin of this model. He has them on his chest and on his shoulders, as well as on his forearm on his left arm. We're also going to dot the center of the eyes using this color. Now with that all done, we're going to move on to some of his clothing. We're going to start with Skaven Blight Dinge, and we're going to paint this on the belt that he has around his waist, as well as on the fur that's around his lower legs. Then we're gonna use Baneblade Brown. We're gonna paint this on the shoulder pad that's on his left shoulder. We're also gonna paint this on the sort of loincloth or tabard that is underneath all of the leather straps that are hanging from his belt. Now with that all done, we're going to use Dryad Bark, and we're going to paint his crossbow with this color. We're also going to paint the Tiki symbol that is on his left upper arm. Now with that all done, we'll take Mornfang Brown, we're going to paint this on all the leather straps that are hanging from his belt all of the tacits. And this actually took me a couple coats, so go ahead and thin your paint down to a consistency you're happy with, and do this in several thin coats. Once we're done with that, we're going to take Rhinox Hide, and we're going to paint this all over his dreadlocks. And because there's a white base under this paint, it is going to take two coats to get it to be as dark as we want it to be. The first coat is going to appear a little bit too light for what we want.
Now we'll take Lead Belcher. We're going to paint this on the dagger that he has in his left hand, as well as the point of the arrows that are coming out of his crossbow. And there are a handful of dagger hilts that are coming out of his pouch on the back. And we're going to go ahead and paint those with this Lead Belcher as well at this time. Now we're going to take Morgast Bone, and we're just going to paint all of the skulls that are hanging on the front of his belt. And be careful when you do this not to get that cream color on the brown details that are around it. Now that we've applied all these different colors, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to wash this over all of the details we just painted. Everything from the Morgast bone, to the different browns, and even the grays. We're going to put this wash over all of those details. The only thing that's not going to get this wash is the skin. Now once we've allowed that to dry, we're going to take Sylvaneth Bark. And we're going to dry brush this over all of the leather parts of this model. That includes the belt and all of the tassets. We're also going to dry brush this on the crossbow and on the dreadlocks of the model. With that all done, we're going to take Abaddon Black. We're going to paint the different spikes that are coming out of his left arm. You'll also want to paint the feathers that are on the arrows coming out of his pouch on the back. Now we're going to take Stormhost Silver, and we're going to pick out the edges on the helmet that we painted with Lead Belcher earlier. We're also going to pick out the edges of the dagger, and any of the other metal areas that we've painted previously. Now with that all done, we're going to use Retributor Armor, and there are a handful of rings mingled into the dreadlocks of the model. We're going to pick those out with this color. Now we're going to use Sotek Green. We're going to paint certain details on the tiki head that is on his left arm. Once that's dried, we're going to use Averlin Sunset. We're going to pick out the other details that we didn't paint with the blue. Now our goal here is to make this look like this is paint put over wood. So we're not going to paint the entire surface. We're going to leave the edges brown still. Now with that all done, we're going to use Wraithbone, and we're going to highlight the skulls. This is just designed to pick out the most raised surfaces and give contrast between the cream and brown parts and where we think it should be more white. Now we're quickly going to take Cassandra Yellow and shade this on all the yellow areas and on the gold rings in his dreadlocks. Once that's done, we're going to use Rackarth Flesh. We're going to paint all of the severed heads that are hanging off of his left leg. This is kind of a pale skin color. We are going to shade this with a green shade later to give it a kind of rotten look to it. Now while that color is drying, we're going to take Death World Forest, we're going to paint this on the severed dinosaur head that is under the right foot of the Predator. You might have to do a couple coats on this because you are painting directly over the white paint that we used to prime the model. We're also going to take Dawnstone and we're going to use this to paint all the teeth and the horns on this severed dinosaur head. Now we're going to take Screamer Pink. We're going to paint this on the back of the head where the severage happens. And this is just kind of represent the exposed flesh there. And we're also going to do this on the inside of the mouth. Now we're going to take Athonian Camo Shade and we're going to wash this all over the severed head that's under his feet as well as the severed heads that are on his left leg. And this is going to give the heads on the leg a very rotten green pale look to the skin. Now once that shade is dried, we're going to take Bane Blade Brown and we're going to dry brush this on the dinosaur head. This is just going to make it look a little bit dusty and a little bit weathered. 
which is what we'd expect from a severed dinosaur head. And with that, we finished this model. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and like it, and then subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos. And then comment and let me know what you think of this model. If you'd like to learn more about Conquest, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll give you more information. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.